Hello and welcome! So today we will do a kind of an interim episode since we are in the middle of a deep diving into big beat and drum and bass we will be using the sampler quite a lot so actually we'll do another Volca deep dive episode so we will deep dive into both Volca sample 1 and Volca sample 2 we will both find what is interesting about the Volca sample, but also it will answer the question if I have a Volca sample, do I need to upgrade to Volca sample too? So that and a lot more is coming up, so stay tuned! But before starting the deep dive into the Korg Volka sample, let's do a quick recap of the history of the sampler. The technology in the sampler cannot create any sound on its own since it has no voltage controlled oscillators. Instead, it can play back recorded sounds from its memory circuits using a digital to analog signal converter. It can, however, add a lot of operators to the recorded sounds, like, for example, pitch, start and stop point, loops, filters, and envelopes. And that is actually what is making it really interesting to use the sampler. In the 80s and 90s, before software recording was properly developed, the digital hardware sampler was a super important tool for the music producers. But before any of these, already in 1979, you had the Fairlight CMI music workstation that could use digital sampling. And even earlier in 1971, you had the EMS system. But in these early days, digital sampling was definitely for a selected few. It was not until the Ensonic Mirage was released in 1984 that anyone could actually afford to buy a sampler. Shortly after that, the Kurzweil K250 was released, and then in 1985, you saw the release of the Akai S612 and in 1986 the release was of the Akai S900, the EMU Emax, the Roland S50 and S550 and also the Korg DSS1. And after these releases the sampling age was upon us. And now we're gonna use the Volca sample to go through the basics of how a sampler works. And while doing so, I will also point out the changes of what has been added or changed between the Volca sample and the Volca sample 2 regarding the basic functions and controllers. So I will start to go through the basics using the Korg Volca sample and then I will uh, go through what has changed regarding the basic functions with the Volca sample next generation. The first thing you do is press like any memory slot so I press now memory slot 1 and then I have to choose a sample here by turning this knob here that's called sample. So I'm going to select sample number 71. What I then can do is I can alter this sample now in lots of ways. So for example I can set the start point. I can set the length. I have a high cut filter. I can change the speed of the sample, which is actually the tone. I also have a pitch envelope, which I can uh, use to create like uh, percussions of anything. And then uh, reduce, for example, the attack. 
And then I have the level, which is basically the volume. And then pan, which can pan the sample between the different channels. And then I have the amp envelope, which has an attack and a decay. Then regarding pattern programming, I can either use a step mode. I just assign samples to different steps. Or I can use rec mode and just uh, tap the samples. And then I save in different uh, slots. So I can uh, create 10 different patterns. Then I have a loop function. So if I select loop on, now the sample will loop. And what's cool to use uh, with the loop, loop function, I would say, is for example, a sample length. Then you can create some cool effects. Let me show you. And, and then you also have some controls here. You can assign a reverb to the sample. To do that, I have to press Funk Reverb and then activate reverb on the instrument that I want to use it on. And then I can apply the reverb by turning this reverb mix knob. You also have the swing function here, which is kind of more interesting to use if I have a drum pattern. Let's see if I have something here. So I can assign uh, any level of swing I want to have. And finally you have the volume, which is the main volume. Uh, then you can do uh, reverse. With this I can reverse the sample. So then I just select reverse and the sample I want to reverse and now it's reversed. And then I can remove reverse using the same. And then if I have a pattern like this, I can use the mute function just mute on the channel. So muting by pressing mute and the channel you want to mute. And the other way around is basically to solo a channel. Yeah, and memory is basically for selecting patterns and uh, function and memory is to save patterns. Step mode, we talked about step jump we haven't talked about. Found that as well, and, and then you have the active step function. The last thing here is the song mode, and this has changed. So the song mode is gone in uh, the Volca sample next generation. So I have 10 memory slots for patterns and six slots for songs. So if I, for example, load a song. I see that this song is playing two patterns. Let me increase that. I can do an active step and then add four patterns. So now it's four patterns in a row in a song. And then I can select basically play pattern one, and then play pattern two, then play pattern one again. Let's change this to pattern three. And then I save this like memory, uh, function memory, song it. Load the song by pressing memory and song one, and then I play the song here. So 
So by using song mode, you can uh, uh, chain patterns in, in ways you want. Okay, so what has changed now in Volca Sample Next Generation? Yeah, so first of all, you're no longer limited to uh, 100 samples. I can now have up to 200 samples, and they have also increased the memory from 4 megabytes to 8 megabytes. Also, I now have 16 patterns, and song mode is gone since Volca Sample Next Generation was released after pattern chaining was developed. So if I have like uh, two, uh, two different patterns here, and another one here, I can just press memory and push one and two at the same time, and now I've created a pattern chain. So I definitely prefer pattern chain instead of song mode. Song mode is really powerful to make long pattern chains, but um, the new pattern chaining is so much easier to use. But that is about it. So besides that these knobs are black instead of gray, and that you have pattern chaining instead of song mode, and increased memory size and uh, increased number of samples you can have, the basic functions are more or less the same. Okay, let's see then if we can use yes, the basic functions of the Volca sample and the Volca sample 2 and create a deep house jam. Let's go. Next, we will cover how you upload samples into your Volca sample unit. And here, things have changed a lot between the classic Volca sample and the Volca sample 2. But we will start to go through how you upload samples into your classic Volca sample. First, I will use this software and I will do uh, some auto leveling to make the, the levels appropriate. And then I will save each of these uh, samples in an inv individual file. And important here to save it in, in uh, 32 kilohertz and also in mono. So that's what the Volca sample would like. For me, it works if I copy it to this folder on my Android phone. Then I will be able to access it. And then I will use this app for my phone. And you can actually find a link to this app and other third-party apps on korg.com. Thank you for that, Korg. And then using this app, I will basically click here. And then I will open, or, and then I will click load. And then I will select the sample file I want. And then it will appear here, and I will click here. And then I will do the same for the next sample, and then for the next sample, and I will store them on number 99, 98, and 96 on my Volca sample. And then to transfer, you will need to connect your phone audio out to the sync in here on the Volca sample. And then it's a really good suggestion to have your mobile phone in flight mode when you do the export. So you don't get someone calling you or you don't get any notifications while you do the transfer, then it will not work. And then you click here and the transfer will start. And now I have these samples here in my Volca sample. For the classic Volca sample, it's a really good idea to make sure you have the latest uh, firmware. Uh, 
So I had to update to the latest firmware uh, before I could actually upgrade the Volca sample with the Pium firmware. So in this web page here at Korg.com you find the Volca sample factory sample set you can download here, but you will also find uh, um, the Volca sample system update. So that you can download and it's actually downloaded as a audio file and then you have to connect uh, from your computer a mini jack cable and uh, connect it to the sync in of the Volca sample and play the audio file when in update mode. But then you will get it to the latest firmware version. And this I needed to do before I could install the um, Pion firmware, which is really great if you want to use MIDI. So then you can download it here as an audio file as well. And then same thing, you play it from your computer into your sync in mini jack of the Volca sample when in update mode. And update mode you activate on the Volca sample by holding funk and play while turning on your Volca sample. Then it says update and it's ready to receive updates through the sync in. To be able to connect to your Volca sample next generation, you will need some drivers and a software for your computer. These are all available at Korg.com. First, you will need a Korg USB MIDI driver. You have to check here that it's the one that's valid for Volca sample 2. Then you will also need to go to the product page of Volca sample and click here to download the Volca sample librarian for Mac or for Windows. And then you install this software on your computer. Then connect your Volca sample 2 unit to your computer using a USB cable of type B micro. Then launch the Korg USB MIDI driver configuration tool and check that the Volca sample is available as a device in the device list. Then you are ready to run the Volca sample librarian. And when opening it the first time, it will automatically sync the data from the unit. Then click on sample to be able to edit samples on the unit. Then open the folder on your computer where you have the samples that you want to use. Scroll down to an empty slot or drag and drop to an existing slot to replace a sample. The software then handles all the format conversion needed. You do not have to care about that. Then when you are done with the changes you want to do, just click send to update the samples on the Volca sample unit. And now it is done. The new samples are available on your unit. Okay, so the last thing we'll go through before we do the final jam is the MIDI implementation, which is actually pretty strange by default. So now I have the Volca Sample 2 is set up on factory defaults and Volca Sample Classic I have updated with the Pion firmware. So first to show the default setup, and that is actually that any button I play on my MIDI keyboard will just trigger sample number one in, in the preset uh, tone, like this. And if I change MIDI channel to MIDI channel two, it will trigger sample number two. So that is basically the MIDI implementation per default, which is pretty strange. Uh, let me now switch to the Volca Sample Classic, where I have the Pion firmware. And uh, this is a much better MIDI implementation. But first I have now to change to channel 12. And then the default setup in the Pion uh, firmware update is that you uh, play actually a chromatic tone based on what you play on the keyboard. <laughs> And you can also use polyphony. So you can set it up here to, for example, uh, free tone polyphony. So that you can do with the Pyron firmware. Uh, you can also set it up so you play like the first 100 samples. 
which is uh, pretty good to use if you want to play drums, for example. So a much better MIDI implementation. So if you want to use MIDI with a Volca sample, I, I definitely recommend you use uh, the unofficial Pine firmware. And, and it works the same basically for the classic Volca sample and for Volca sample 2. And now for the final jam, I actually did some effort and tried to really max the value I could get out of the Volca sample. So what I've done is a bit of a meta exercise. I've actually sampled synth sounds from the Volca FM and I've sampled the drum sounds from the Volca Beats. And I've taken these samples now and imported sounds into the Volca Sample 2, which is playing now the melody. And I have um, used the Volca Sample Classic uh, to play the lead using MIDI and added also some vocals on top of that. Uh, and created some kind of lo-fi synth pop that sounds pretty much like a release would have sounded in the mid 80s when they used this kind of sampler technology to produce bangers. So here we go, enjoy! Okay, so to do a summary now, I think it's safe to say that the Volca Sample 2 is an upgrade from the classic Volca Sample. You have more storage, uh, you can have more samples, and it is definitely more convenient. The new USB interface is more convenient to use, and also I really like pattern chaining. It's easier to use pattern chaining in a live situation. Song mode is a bit complicated to use, but if you have time to program a song before, you can use that as well. Um, I also think that Korg could have made a better MIDI implementation in the Volca Sample 2. If you plan to use MIDI with the Volca Sample or the Volca Sample 2, I think you should install the Pium firmware, and then you will get a much better MIDI implementation. So as a summary, if I were to pick a unit Today, I would definitely go with the Volca Sample 2. If I have a classic Volca Sample today, I would say you can basically do everything with the classic Volca Sample. You just have to be more patient. So the summary is basically Volca Sample next generation is much more convenient and easier to use than the classic Volca Sample, but they can do roughly the same functions. <laughs> 